Hi, welcome back. I'm Amy Baudette from the Altice Store. Thank you for watching the second of our video series on designing an off-grid solar system. Step two is to size the battery bank. We'll discuss the different considerations that go into sizing your battery bank. We've already done a loads list in our previous video, so we know how much power we'll use each day. Now let's see what size battery bank we need to store it. The answer may surprise you. Just a quick reminder of the components that make up an off-grid system. We'll be starting at the battery bank today. You may recall the loads list we did in our previous video. We came up with a total usage of 2191.5 watt hours a day. Note, however, that 44 watt hours are DC, not AC, and therefore not going through the inverter. So we'll need to use that information later. So let's get started. The first thing we need to decide is what voltage we will make the battery bank. Most off-grid battery banks are either 12, 24, or 48 volts. So how do you decide which to use? First is what voltage are your loads? Are you just powering a small video surveillance camera or lights that run off 12 volts DC? Or is it an AC system that will be using an inverter to convert from DC to AC? If it is using an inverter, what size does the inverter need to be? Generally, the higher the output wattage, the higher the DC input. For example, if it is a 2000 watt inverter, it may be available in 24 volt DC, but a 6000 watt inverter will certainly require 48 volts. Another possible consideration is the distance between the solar panels and the battery bank. Depending on what type of charge controller you use, you may need to match the voltage of the solar array with the voltage of the battery bank. I'll get more into that in a future video. But if you do need to match voltages, keep in mind that if the panels are far away from the batteries, you can reduce the gauge of the expensive copper wire needed by using a higher voltage. Since using a higher voltage results in lower current, you can potentially save money by running the system at 48 volts instead of 12 volts. A big consideration is how much power you need to store in the batteries. This is combined with the restriction of how many parallel strings you can use without negatively affecting your battery bank. Most experts recommend no more than two parallel strings. Some even say you should only do one, while some will begrudgingly say that three is all right in a pinch. The reason is that the more parallel strings you wire, the more likely you are to have an uneven charging and discharging. Even a slight difference in voltage between the strings can result in a shorter lifespan for the batteries. Let's get into this a little bit deeper. We'll use an 8A 4D battery as an example. It is 12 volts and 200 amp hours. 12 volt times 200 amp hours equals 2400 watt hours for one battery. Remember that wiring in parallel, or the pluses together and then the minuses together, increases the amp hours but keeps the voltage the same and wiring in series, plus to minus, increases the voltage but keeps the amp hours the same. If I needed 4800 watt hour capacity, I can wire two of these batteries in parallel. However, if I needed 9600 watt hours, I would need four of these batteries. Since I want to limit the number of parallel strings I use, I can't wire them all in parallel, but I could wire them in two parallel strings of two in series. In doing so, I made a 24 volt, 200 amp hour battery bank. 24 volts times 200 amp hours equals 9600 watt hours. Or I can make a 48 volt system by wiring them in one string of four in series. To decide which voltage to use, you can then refer back to the other considerations of if you have any specific voltage DC loads or if the inverter you picked requires a certain voltage. If you did need to have a 9600 watt hour battery bank, as in the previous example, but you need a 12 volt bank for your loads, you can still accomplish this. You would want to pick a lower voltage but higher amp hour battery. 9600 watt hours divided by 12 volts equals 800 amp hours. So how can we build that? We can pick a lower voltage, higher amp hour battery, like the Concord PVX405 at 6 volts and 405 amp hours and wire them two parallel strings of two in series. The two 6 volt batteries in series makes 12 volts and the two 405 amp hour batteries in parallel equals 810 amp hours. 
When wired together, you get a 12 volt, 810 amp hour, or 9720 watt hour battery bank. Now that we've figured out how much power we use a day, we need to know how many days we plan on running our equipment off the battery bank if there's no sun to recharge it, called days of autonomy. This is a delicate balance because the more days we select, the bigger and more expensive the battery bank gets. But we don't want to go too small either because we don't want to run out of power and the less we drain the batteries, the longer the battery bank will live. This is where the generator I mentioned can come in handy. For example, you can pick three days of autonomy and plan on using the Jenny to charge up the battery bank if you need a day four. Depth of discharge, or DOD, is how far you drain the battery down. A lead-acid deep cycle battery that is made for renewable energy systems can be drained down pretty low, but the less you drain it, the longer it will live. You'll often hear people say you can drain a deep cycle battery down to 50%. That's true, but if you do, it will last half as long as if you drained it to only 20%. Each battery will have a depth of discharge chart. You can see here that if you drain this battery down to 50%, using half its power, you can get about 1,500 cycles, or 1,500 days if you do that every day. That's just over four years. But if you only drain it down to 20%, you can get 3,400 cycles. That's over nine years. That sounds great, except you have to remember that requires a bigger bank to use a smaller percentage. So you have to balance the upfront cost of the system with how often you need to replace the batteries. You may also hear the term state of charge, or SOC. That is a percentage of how full the batteries are. It's the inverse of DOD. So a battery that is 30% depth of discharge is at 70% state of charge. Batteries are rated at 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. When the temperature gets colder than 77 degrees, the amp hour capacity decreases, but the lifespan increases. When a battery is hotter than 77, the capacity increases, but the lifespan decreases. Again, it's all a balance. To compensate for lower temperatures, we need to increase the battery capacity. This chart shows the change in capacity based on temperature. You see here at 77 degrees, the capacity is at 100%, what it's rated for. for. For example, 100 amp hours. But you can see here at 50 degrees, you're at 81% of the rated capacity. So if you still need 100 amp hours, you would need to multiply that by 1.19 to get a battery rated at 119 amp hours. And yet at 50 degrees, it will be able to store 100 amp hours. The colder the battery is, the larger the rated battery needs to be to store your power. Okay, now that we know the variables, let's do some math to figure out what size battery bank we need. From our loads list, you remember the loads list, don't you? We're using 2192 watt hours a day, but only 2148 watt hours was AC. We'll divide it by the efficiency of the inverter we use, let's say 92%, to make up for lost power used by the inverter. Then we enter our DC loads of 44 watt hours. This gives us 2379 watt hours. Next step, we multiply that 2379 watt hours by the three days of autonomy and the temperature compensation. I'm going to be storing it in a 50 degree room, so I used 1.19. We'll divide that by 0.5 for 50% depth of discharge. Now notice we're using 50% depth of discharge, but that's after our three days of autonomy. So I can run my loads for three days with no solar recharging the batteries, and after those three days, I'll have used half of my rated capacity of my battery bank. That should give me plenty of stored power and a long battery life. This gives me 16,986 watt hour battery bank needed. Then, I divide this number by the voltage of the battery bank we picked, 48 volts. So I get a result of 354 amp hour battery bank needed. Okay, we're almost there. We take our 354 amp hours and divide it by the maximum number of strings we want to use. 
I'll go with two. This says that I need two strings of at least 177 amp hour batteries. Let's pick some batteries that'll fit the bill. An MK8AGC2 battery is rated at 6 volts, 190 amp hours. We can use that one. Next, we take the system voltage of 48 volts and divide it by the 6 volt battery, which tells us we need 8 6 volt batteries in series to get 48 volts. Let's add that all up. Two parallel strings of 8 in series equals 16 of those batteries needed for our system. That's it for the second video of designing an off-grid PV system. Watch the next videos in the series for how to size the solar array and the charge controller and inverter using the numbers you came up with from your loads list. Also watch more of our video series on our website and feel free to peruse our selection of deep cycle batteries. We've got a team of highly trained technical sales reps available to help you plan your system. Give us a call. Thanks.